So there are many design patterns out there. And one of the easiest to understand is the service design pattern. Just like the MVC design pattern, it takes minutes to learn and you can start applying it right away. Now, one of the benefits is if you ever go to a job interview and you tell them that you have been using this design pattern, they're going to consider you for one of their larger projects that they might have. It's going to create a really good impression. Not only that, within the company you're currently working for, when you tell them that you're using a design pattern, it's going to make them understand maybe he's ready for larger projects, more responsibility. Having said that, let's get into it. Hit that subscribe button. What is the five fingers? Say to the face! What? Stop! Now, I've created a job application project. Companies will show up and create jobs or post jobs. Then, applicants will show up and apply for jobs. Lastly, the admin is going to monitor the whole thing and make sure they're a good moderator. So, let's jump into the code. This is the company's job controller. In this one, the query is not so important. Right now in this video, we're trying to understand how to apply the service design pattern. So first, let's try to understand what kind of problems it solves. In this case, the company shows up and they're given a listing of all the jobs we have. Also, I give them a count of the applicants that have applied for that particular job. So in this one, we're getting a listing of the jobs and we send that back. Next, there's specific jobs that a company might want to see. So we go and get that. Lastly, the destroy method will check if they actually own this particular job that they're trying to delete. Now the same exact logic is repeated for the admin controller. When an admin logs in, they want to see a listing of jobs just to see which one are the most popular jobs and how many people have applied to those jobs. Again, the show controller is going to be exactly the same thing. We're showing them a specific job. There's one thing you might notice is that the code is repeating itself. I, in fact, I could copy this, go to the company's controller, paste it in here, and it would be the same exact logic. Now, if you've been programming for a while, you know that this is completely wrong. It shouldn't be this way. If you're repeating code, that's a good sign you need to change the way you're working. And I'll show you why. Uh, the last controller I want to show you before we get started with the service pattern is the applicant's controller. When they log in, they're getting the exact same code as we saw on the other two controllers. So now I want you to imagine your manager walks in and says, listen, I need to count the number of times each specific user views a specific job post. So this way, if one person is viewing a job post 20 times, I don't need, I don't want to think that a total of, let's say 50 people viewed that job post when really one person viewed it 20 times. Having said that, now with this code, I'm going through each specific job that we pulled out of the database and then I'm making an entry into the job tracking table, which I've created behind the scenes. Now, let me open that up. Create job tracking table. Now, in this table, here's the migration file for it. I'm saving the user, the job particular ID, and then timestamps as to when each specific user has viewed a specific job. So I can track that and show it with timestamps. I'm going to close this out. And here's the code again. I take each job. I make an entry into the job tracking table along with the person who's currently logged in. Now this specific code I can copy and I also need to paste it again into the admin controller. Now again, I'm copying and pasting code. So let's say I show up here and I paste that code and now I forget to make that entry into the applicant's controller. Let's say I was in a rush or I was having a bad day and I forgot that there are three specific roles that I have this. In the future, there could be more roles. There could be anything as the application keeps growing. So let's say I make that mistake and a month goes by. The manager comes back in and says, listen, I was with a job applicant. They viewed a specific job in front of me and the counter did not go up. I didn't see the counter go up because you didn't track it properly. Now I've lost confidence with the particular manager. In this case, the severity isn't so much, but tomorrow you could be working on an e-commerce website. You could be working on any critical application, and if you make that mistake of not including logic where it needs to be included, that's a problem. A bigger problem right now is I'm having to repeat myself. In programming, there's a very important principle. Don't repeat yourself. Dry. And now since we've seen a problem, let's see how we can solve that problem by using the service design pattern. Again, this pattern is much similar to the MVC pattern in that they're easy to understand and apply within minutes. So let's go to the Explorer. 
I'm going to go to app, HTTP, right click on HTTP and create a folder called service. In this folder, I'm going to create a file called job service.php. I'm going to put in some basics here. I'll say namespace. And again, I'm an app HTTP service. So that's what I'm going to say app HTTP service. Then I'm going to create a class called job service. And now let's create a method. The first method that we're going to create is going to control or house this particular information listing. Now I'm going to show up here, paste that code. And let's return jobs. Now I need to include the job post model, I'm going to right click and say import class. Now if you're not seeing this particular option is because you need to install an extension. So I want you to go to the left hand side, click on that and then install an extension called PHP name resolver. It's by Mehdi Hassan. Once you have installed this, you can right click on a class and say import that class. Once you do that, you can scroll up and you can see that it has been included. Now I'm going to save this file. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go back to my company's controller. Now all these lines of code have been shifted to the job service. The only difference is it's now been centralized. So I go here, I'm going to comment this out for now. I'm going to go here and write down job service and say new job service. VS code has already brought it up. So I'm going to hit tab. And then now I have an instance of this particular class that I've just created. And I can call this method, which is centralizing my code of getting job posts. I can come back and I can say jobs will be equal to job service. And I want the listing method. Now this will give me the exact same thing that this was giving me. So I'm going to remove this. And then I can continue on with my logic. In fact, this is also going to be repeating now all the other controllers. So I'm going to cut this. I'm going to place it here. I'm going to save and again, this particular model needs to be included in this file. So I'll right click, say import class or hit the keyboard shortcut. I'm going to hit save, come back. And now look at how much more cleaner this looks. I'm going to open up another controller. All these lines of code have been replaced with two lines of code. And the benefit here is that my code, my logic has been centralized in the job service class. If tomorrow I need to make a change, there's only one place I need to make that change and everyone who's calling that logic will be updated right away. So I only need to make the change in one location. That is the service design pattern. So let's keep applying it. Uh, but before we do, there's two lines of code. And if you wanted to shorten it, you don't have to, we could shorten it by copying it from here. And I'm going to create parentheses and paste it in here. And now a new job service instance will be created. And on that instance, we can call the listing and we'll still get back the same results. I'm going to remove the line above it. And now we have one line of code. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go to the admin service controller, all these lines of code, I'm just going to comment them out. And this can be replaced with this one line of code we just wrote a minute ago, I'm going to right click on this and import the class. I'm going to hit save. And now this is giving me now this is giving me the same exact results as all these lines of code were but again, now this code has been shifted to one central location. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing again, copy this one line of code and paste it here. I'm going to right click, import the class, save the file. And now they all are doing exactly the same thing. Now let's make one more change. Let's go to the show and let's copy that into the service as well. I'm going to copy this, go to my job service and let's create another method. And this one will say the show method and we're expecting a job ID. I'll paste that in there. And whatever job ID they pass me is the one I look up. And then this is the one I return. This is the job that I'll return. 
I'm going to do the same thing. Come back here. In fact, let's just copy and paste. Let's copy from here. We'll paste it here. Let's comment the code before it. And here we'll change this to show and we'll pass in the job. Let's copy this again and go to the job controller for the admin. We'll do the same thing here. In fact, let's just remove it. Lastly, the applicant's controller will do the same thing here. Now your manager walks in and says, listen, it's great that you're tracking how many times each person views the job listing, but when they view it individually, I also want to see who watched it and how many times they were viewing it. And again, we'll say, okay, great, we'll add that logic. But this time, look at the controllers. I'm not going to add that logic here in the company's controller. I'm not going to add it into the admin's controller, nor am I going to add it in the applicant's controller. I'm going to put that in a central location. And that central location is our job service. This is where the service design pattern really shines. So let me add that here. So I've added that code here. And you'll notice that I check if we really did find the job. And then I save that information in the job tracking table. Now notice anyone who's calling this logic, let's go to the company's controller. Since they're calling the same exact logic in the job service class, they're obviously going to have that same change affected. In the admin controller, this, they're calling the same exact logic from the same class. So is the applicant. So I only needed to make that change in one place. And that was the benefit of the service design pattern. Now let's look at another scenario. Your manager walks in and says, listen, every time you track how many times a user has watched a particular job posting, I want you to check if they have gone over a specific limit. Let's say it's 1000 views within a specific month. Now this is something we can do. Instead of adding that into any specific controller and then having to copy and paste it into other controllers, we can do that within a service class. But this is user specific scenario we just talked about. Would I add that in the job ser service class? Uh, maybe it's best to go back and create another service. I'm going to right click, create a new file and say user service.php. And now any service, any logic related to the user, I can add it into their own class. So I'm going to create the base stuff, name, space, app, HTTP and then service. Now let's give the class user service. And now let's create a method called checking viewing limit. Now the benefit here is I'll pass in the user. And now I can add any logic there is uh, check the user limit. If past then uh, block the user. Okay, I could add that logic here. I want you to understand something. We're centralizing logic. If I go to the job service class, I've centralized the logic of getting the job post. So if tomorrow he wants to track my manager or the company owner wants to track who is watching a specific job post each time or how many times I can do that by making the change in one place. The same thing with the show. And then if there's a user service, now I can track, well, is this person going over a specific limit? And if tomorrow there's, let's say something else you've added to you, another feature you've added to your website, like, um, like how many times a user's profile has been viewed X amount of times, you could do that by using centralized logic. The idea I want you to walk away with is you want to centralize your logic. And if you go back to our folder structure now, there's a service folder with an app HTTP. And now any related logic that you need to centralize, you would create a file here and then you keep adding on to it. In the case of jobs, all the logic that you need to centralize for jobs would be one file. For user service, it would be in one file and so on. And that is the service design pattern. If you want me to give you much more examples on this, please let me know in the comment section. Until then, have a good one.